from now on all the upcoming videos of this series will be available early for the members of the channel that means that if you have the membership uh, you will get access to the videos before they will be released to the public it's a great way to stay ahead and support the channel and uh, dive into the content uh, as soon as it's ready thank you so much for all the support and as always happy coding hello and welcome to the first video of our compose multi-platform series so a lot of stuff uh, is there that we have to cover in this series but i'll start slow and we'll cover a little bit of basics of what compose platform is how we can use it what are the pros what are the cons we'll try to compare it with the other tools that are available in the market as well and uh, in this video this basically what we'll do is that we'll set up the basic structure like setting up the android studio setting up the um, basic first project a very basic project trying to run it on you know for web android desktop and ios so there will be plenty of things uh, and we'll get started with a little bit of theoretical stuff first and then we'll jump into the um, practical stuff. Okay, so the first thing is what is Compose Multi-Platform? How is it different from Kotlin Multi-Platform? So basically Compose Multi-Platform is yet another powerful uh, UI framework uh, that basically let you create all your UI in Kotlin. Uh, in like if you talk about Kotlin multi-platform, what happens in that is that your shared code is written in Kotlin, but your UI is always like native. If you're working on iOS, you have to write in Swift. If you are working on Android, uh, for Android, it is uh, written in either XML based or Compose. And then for web, it is like in JavaScript and all that. So that was happening in KMP. And uh, with, with Compose multi-platform, what happens is that you write all your code with Jetpack Compose and the UI framework basically handle it to convert it into the native iOS web or Android code. So that is one thing. Uh, the second thing is that it is basically written on top of Kotlin multi-platform. So when we talk about Compose multi-platform, deep down in the under the hood, it is actually Kotlin multi-platform. Now the question arises that why you should learn uh, Kotlin multi-platform in 2025. I think uh, this is the right time because JetBrains has recently announced uh, the iOS as stable, which means now the iOS application are production ready as well. And uh, web is something that they've been working on and we are hopefully soon we'll be able to get, you know, something in beta for web as well, which is a good sign. And other than that, there has been some really nice improvement in the K2 compi compiler for Kotlin, which, which basically has a lot of performance and all those kind of improvements as well. Uh, second thing is that um, if you're an Android developer or if you have, you know, some sort of Kotlin related stuff, it becomes really easy because it's almost similar code. There are a couple of things that are extra. Other than that, I think most of the stuff is pretty similar. One more thing is that, you know, you have an option always to fall back to, you know, native thing so for example let's say if you have any performance related stuff and you know you want something to be native to to, to do you can do it uh, and one more thing i think um, that i like about compose multi-platform or kotlin multi-platform is that it uh, the the ease of writing you know the native code uh, is there you can you know define some sort of uh, abstraction and uh, write uh, platform specific code. Now, uh, the next thing would be to compare Compose multi-platform with the existing technology. I'm not advocating here that you have to pick Compose multi-platform. I think every technology is there in the market and it will be there in the market. Nobody is going anywhere. Uh, Flutter is going nowhere. React Native is going nowhere. Compose multi-platform has a lot to, to cover. Uh, in the future and it is going to be future so basically there will be a lot of different kind of diversity in this but you know uh, as a as an android developer i would always prefer compose multi-platform because that gives me ease uh, i don't have to learn a new technology a whole lot of new technology i'm basically uh, i have to learn something that is written on, on top of kotlin so it will become more easier for me you know to learn that but it doesn't mean that if somebody learn, uh, if somebody knows J JavaScript, they will always prefer React Native. And I think uh, that's a pretty, pretty stable, a pretty decent technology to learn and uh, work on. But we'll be basically try to compare a little bit of like which uh, specific technology has a better native feel, uh, how easy it is to, to for the code sharing or like how much code sharing is there available for each platform uh, regarding web support, iOS support and like learning curve and all that. So the first thing is that language uh, for full letter, you know that it's Dart, which is used for React Native. We use JavaScript and for Compose multi-platform, it's all Kotlin. We might, you know, have some sort of touch for, for, for from KMP where we might, we might be using uh, 
Swift for, for a very sh uh, short stuff and then we'll be using JavaScript uh, if needed. It's not something that we'll be definitely doing, but we'll try to, you know, uh, cover some project that will basically need them to have the full control and show you how how powerful the Compose multi-platform is. When it comes to native feel, uh, I think a Flutter have a really good native feel. React Native has a moderate kind of, you know, native feel. And with Compose multi-platform, like I said, it's all native. You can like go all native and it, it can give you very, very decent um, experience for that as well. Code sharing, uh, Flutter, all code is written in Dart. So I think pretty much everything you write is, is in that, uh, react native to some extent you have to, you know, do some sort of configuration for, for, uh, app specific. So there will be some sort of things that you write specific, but mostly, mostly it will be, um, written in JavaScript with compose multi-platform. Uh, I, well, if you look at from the top level, it is all again, just like, um, uh, flutter, but I think, uh, it is it it gives you you know a diver like sort of power if you want you know to go for something else this there is also chance to to have that uh possibility to to basically share the code 100 percent or reduce it and use uh platform specific things web support uh with flutter and react native it's basically stable and very mature in in react native in android it's still in alpha so we we should expect you know um next couple of months or maybe a year to, to get it, you know, uh, in a stable. And then uh, for iOS, all, all the platform are pretty stable and they're really nice. Uh, learning curve, uh, it depends uh, what you have in the, as a basic. If you have a little bit of knowledge of JavaScript, React Native can be really good. If you have a little bit of knowledge of Android or Kotlin, uh, CMP is going to be super easy for you. If you have a little bit of knowledge of Dart and how basically this works, so I think it learning curve depends, you know, uh, I would say Flutter is slightly, you know, medium because for that you have to learn a specific language and all that. Uh, JavaScript normally we learn in, 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 in university and colleges. So that becomes pretty easy. And with Compose, again, you have to learn Kotlin and all that. And if you have a little bit of Android knowledge, I think that becomes that somehow uh, I'll keep it in at the medium uh, similar to, you know, Flutter. Now, uh, the next thing would be, uh, to set it up so basically uh to set up it's like not a very big big of a thing or like it's not some sort of some sort of you know uh hectic task all you have to do is to install a couple of softwares and then you're done if you're on a mac you can run uh almost all the supported platforms for example uh android ios uh desktop and uh, uh, web but if you're on Windows, you you will not be able to build it for, for iOS, but you will still be able to, you know, run it for the other platform. So if, even if you cannot test it, like most of the cases would be, you'll be, you'll be fine if, if you are just going through uh, the proper steps and all that. But uh, now it comes to uh, installing uh, the software. All you have to do is just go to Android Studio and download the latest version so that is basically the current android studio that you can download you can just download this and once you download that it will basically install the relevant step i have already installed everything uh, that's there um, like you don't have to do anything customization just press next 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 and everything and it will take some time it will you require some internet to, to to like download the relevant stuff and once everything is ready uh, you will see something like this uh, on your screen. Along with that, you can have Xcode as well. Uh, that is also important if you are running for, for iOS and it will not run without that. Okay. Now, the, the next thing is that we will basically set up the first project that we have. So first you have to just go over here, select Kotlin multi-platform from over here and you can name it anything. For example, uh, it is com dot code with fk and i'm gonna call this as first cmp app 2025 let's say you, you name it i'm the minimum is android 7 for android and then we will be using kotlin dsl next and this is now interesting so basically by default android and ios is basically used and uh, you can always select do not share UI, share UI. If you use share UI, it will be composed. If not, it will be the normal Kotlin platform. Uh, then you can define whatever, what else you want, like desktop web. You can also have a server section as well. I'm not gonna use a server over here. Uh, I have a whole lot 
uh, of a separate series that is uh, also under uh, way for for Ktor development, where we will be learning how to create web services for our Android apps or our apps. Uh, so we'll cover that, and then maybe in one of the future project for Compose Multi Platform, we merge everything into one and uh, develop something cool. But yeah, so that's basically something that I did. Now I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna press finish. So once you press finish, what it will do is that it will run, uh, it will build uh, for a while. So it will take time. Like normally it, what it does is that it downloads a lot of dependencies and all that. So the first time it will take some time. So just don't get worried if it just keep on loading. It will take some time. If you have a good internet connection, you it might take lesser time, but overall it will take some time for you. And once the, the all the setup and all the uh, process is done, uh, you will see something like this. So I'm going to switch from Android uh, to project. Okay. So now inside this project, uh, I'll show you what we have. So there is this one package that is compose app, which is the shared code or the uh, Kotlin code, all the Kotlin code that's there. And then one section is this iOS app, which is basically uh, the Swift related code. We are not going to touch most of the time uh, this section instead will be working in under this specific section but there might be some some cases where we, we have to change a couple of file or something like that but we'll definitely for now uh, for the basic stuff we, we don't need anything to touch it but it is just like an I, ios project that basically we have and then inside this gradle uh yeah so the next thing is that this gradle uh the in, in this gradle section i think this file file is important this basically contains the log cat basically the catalog of all the SDKs that we would love to integrate, you can like have a catalog like this and you can always directly integrate that as well. But having it like placed it over here, it becomes like really easy for Android Studio as well to identify the relevant version. And if there are like any updates available, you get a yellow line under that. And it's like much easier, you know, to, to upgrade from there. But that is something that you have. Uh, and this is, this is something we'll be using a lot. And other than that, um, we have this compose app section, which is very interesting. And uh, this basically contains everything. So inside that you will see this is a compose app. It has a build.gradle file and it has, you know, a lot of dependency will cover that. But just just showing the build gradle file is something that basically contains all the configuration, like what kind of SDK, what kind of uh, platform that it's running on and all stuff that's related to, to, to basically to building that uh, is basically available over here right now if you go to the source section you will see a lot of things for example there is this android main section then we have a common main common test desktop main ios main and uh, wasmjs main so talking about this the android main means that if there is anything that is related to android section that you want to write you'll basically write it over here for example you have a main activity from android studio that's there and then there is a platform related android kt file i'll show you what does that mean but i think for all that you have this now the next thing is the common main section the common main is the common code like the app this is the starting point and this is placed in the common and basically anything that you create all the design or stuff that you do over here is basically uh kind of starts from here um so all the common code like that you have for that you want to run for Android, iOS, web, desktop, all the common code goes over here. But there are like some specific thing. For example, if we talk about the platform functionality over here inside this, you will see that inside this platform, you will, uh, it, it says Android and it also says this SDK in, this is basically platform specific thing for iOS. It will be uh, iOS and, and something like that. For example, if I go to iOS main, you will see a platform and then over here, it is basically a little bit of different like it says the system name and system version and all that uh, when we talk about backend or sorry uh, for when we talk about uh, web it is says web with kotlin slash wasm and then we have desktop in the desktop you have uh, java and all that so basically what i what i mean is that for platform specific thing there are specific sections that we have and the common section means that it is basically the common place where everything is there and this you can see that this is you know some sort of abstraction that we have written and then all the relevant explanation are basically available in these functionalities we'll cover that but it is just for you to understand that if there is anything that is platform specific that goes into the 
platform main but if there is something that is common that always goes to the common main section okay now uh, this common test mean is that this basically contains the common test the tests that are related you know the common side common section of the app and if they're like specific to to a specific module you can write your test there as well so that's that uh, what else this is basically the build.gradle file the top level uh, you can basically most of the time you don't touch these kind of things but let's say if there is anything needed we will basically do but this is the project level thing uh, then we have the settings.gradle file that basically is supposed to handle you know the the whole uh, kind of modules and all that that are basically defined in the app so all these things are placed over here what else do we have i think nothing much that we have so the next thing that we would i would like to do is basically to run it run this on android ios and uh, probably web and desktop so let's just try running it the project on android first so from over here i'm just gonna play, press run i have this emulator okay so the build is completed and now we'll see if it runs Okay, it has ran and now this is the section when I click on that you will see hello Android 30 and it basically shows me the Android 30 for this and now I'll place it on the side and from over here let's just select iOS so from compose app I'll switch to this I can select a relevant let's say use this and try running this Okay, so sometime what happens is that the simulator might not like the Android Studio might not be able to, to run the simulator. So so you'll have to you know do a little bit of work and manually uh, start the simulator so that Android Studio can install the relevant app. Okay, the build failed. I don't know why. Let's just try again. By okay, I'll try once again because. Uh, I believe that issue came because of my emulator not being able to run so hopefully now it should be able to run that okay now you can see the app is there it has started and again similar so over here you will see we when I click on that it shows me the iOS and the OS version that that basically it's running so both android and ios are working fine now we'll start uh, testing the back end sorry the, the web so for that you just need to run select the web start web hopefully this will work okay so now uh, the web is running and let's just click on that when you click on that you see web dot kotlin android ios and web all running the same code that we have is just basically using the kotlin multi-platform compose multi-platform icon from there and running it on, on, on each one and like all these animation and all that everything is there which is like really cool so so basically that was something that we would we wanted to do in this video because uh, that was a very basic one we, i wanted to, sh to let you go through all the uh packages that it creates and all that will definitely explore more of this because like this compose resources are all these things are still there and we need to do that but for now i think uh, this should be enough uh, so thank you so much for watching the video and um, i'll see you in the next video so till then happy coding bye thank you so much for watching the video if you found this tutorial helpful don't forget to like subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't forget any update if you got any question, you can join my Discord server. The link is in the description. Also, for quick updates and tips, you can follow me on Instagram. Until next time, keep learning, keep developing. Bye.